everybody. Welcome to this special event. My name is Ross McKeechee, and today I'm delighted that we're joined by Dr. Judith Orloff. Before we get to her formal introduction, a few Banyan-related announcements. Although we have people joining us from everywhere in the world, the physical location of Banyan Books in Vancouver, BC is on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Banyan Books and Sound is in its 50th anniversary this year. It's 50 years as Canada's spiritual and healing resource. We've been local and independent since the start. Please support your local independent bookstores. Every time you make a purchase from Banyan Books and Sound, you support all kinds of wonderful events like today's program. Okay, our guest today, Judith Orloff, MD, has been called the godmother of the empath movement. She is a psychiatrist, an empath, and a New York Times bestselling author. She is also on the UCLA psychiatric clinical faculty. Transforming the face of psychiatry, Dr. Orloff asserts that we are keepers of an innate intuitive intelligence, so perceptive that it can tell us how to heal and prevent illness. Yet intuition and spirituality are the very aspects of our wisdom, usually disenfranchised from traditional healthcare. Receiving her medical degree at the University of Southern California School of Medicine and completing her psychiatric residence at UCLA, Dr. Orloff now specializes in treating empaths and highly sensitive people in her private practice. In that work, as well as her writing and many public presentations, she synthesizes the pearls of traditional medicine with leading edge knowledge of intuition, energy, and spirituality. She passionately believes that the future of medicine involves integrating all this wisdom to achieve total wellness. Dr. Orloff's work has been featured on the Today Show, CNN, O, The Oprah Magazine, The New York Times, and USA Today. She has spoken at the American Psychiatric Association, Fortune Magazine's Most Powerful Women Summit, and Google. The author of eight books, her books for empaths include The Empath's Survival Guide, Thriving as an Empath, and The Empath's Empowerment Journal. Today, Dr. Orloff is with Banyan Books for this special conversation and workshop on her beautiful new set of Oracle cards, the Empaths Empowerment Deck, which is based off the material from her three books for empaths. This card deck is a resource for all sensitive, empathic people who want quick intuitive guidance about how to empower their decisions and their lives in a busy, often overwhelming world. A source of inspiration and insight, Dr. Orloff will demonstrate how these cards connect you to intuition and to the divine. They also convey important reminders about staying centered in the midst of stress and how to avoid sensory overload. Dr. Orloff will be working with a few individuals today to show you how to use the cards to do readings. She offers a limited number of Zoom or phone sessions for those wanting to awaken empathy and intuition. And if you'd like to learn more about our guest and her work, please visit her website, which is Dr. Dr. Judith Orloff.com. Everybody, please join me in a warm welcome for Judith Orloff. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm excited about the next hour and a half together me with too. everyone. So just to start off, Judith, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create this deck. Oh, I, since I've been a little girl, this is, this is the deck. I'm gonna, we're going to keep showing visuals because the energy of the deck comes through the visuals as well as my words, as well as your energy of picking them. Um, but I've, since I've been little, I've always been attracted to decks. And I would go to the tarot and just pick the tarot. God knows how I found the tarot deck when I was little, but I, I found it. And so I've been using cards um, really my whole life to pick and kind of transport me into a deeper intuitive state so, and guide my life. 
basically. So I just love the cards. I love the connection with the cards. I love how it gives me quick intuitive guidance when maybe my mind is very active and I can't really communicate with my deepest intuition. If I'm in a situation where I'm stuck and I can't find an answer and my mind is swirling, I'll show you how to spread out the cards, ask an inner question, and then reach intuitively. The hand has to reach on its own rather than you guiding it. It, it has a magnetism to reach to the card to pick your answer. And then the key to that answer is following the card. It's not saying, I don't want this card, or I don't understand this card, or I have resistance to this card. I'd rather have another card. <laughs> That's all the mind. You just simply have to do what the card advises and then see if the situation improves. All right, so it's very simple. You don't want to overthink this, and that's why I love it. And I'm a psychiatrist. Um, I've gone through 14 years of medical training at USC County Hospital and UCLA. Um, I did my psychiatric residency there in the VA. So I have a lot of you know conventional medical wisdom, you know, in me as well, and which I apply all the time to my patients. Plus. I'm an empath, so I'm able to sense and feel and know what's going on through energy, through intuition, what's going on in patients. So I combine the two. Um, I don't exclude my medical knowledge. I don't exclude my empath abilities. I bring them together. And so I wanna be a model for you and the cards could be a way to utilize this um, to bring the knowledge together so that you can follow your deepest intuition and not forsake your intellectual mind either. You want to be everything. So in my work and in my life, it, it's a, you know, a joyous development process. And it does not like a one-time deal or one-time workshop. I mean, I feel so blessed to be here with you, you know, and to be with all of you and, and Banyan Books to support independent bookstores and such a wonderful, wonderful bookstore. I love bookstores. I would be very sad, you know, if we, we didn't have bookstores. Very, very sad, but that's not a, a possibility. I'm not, you know, I love, I love books. I love cards. I love holding the cards. It's very tactile. So I want to guide you, you know, through all of this and to just say that I, I sometimes use my cards with the patients where I say, pick a card. If they're stuck, they can't get somewhere, you know, and they want another perspective, they'll pick it. And that perspective will bypass your ego, it will bypass your intellectual mind and give you a direction that you have to be ready to take that step to act on the direction. It might seem like it's really simple, but that's even better. The simpler, the better. So you want to develop a harmonious relationship with this deck. It's a living organism. It's not just an inanimate object. It has energy. And as I work with people today, and as we go through the different cards, you know, I'd like you to really try and tune into it, not just think, oh, this is so interesting, which you can do too, but really begin to feel the energy of each card because they're archetypal energies and I'll guide you through this. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So maybe I'll ask Jacob, our wonderful producer and events curator, Jacob Steele's working in the background and he's going to bring up some images of some cards as examples for everyone to get familiar. And this first one is the instructions card. And Judith, you had something you wanted to say about that, letting people know. How I to did. The, the instructions for how to use the deck are on a card in the deck. And it's the first card. So, but just know that you want to set it aside because if you shuffle it, it will be part of the, the shuffle. And that's not, that's not as good. So you take the instructions, put it aside. And I want to read it to you. Um, and, and tune in as I'm reading, as I'm talking, tune into the energy of my voice and how I'm connecting to the cards. It's, I'm not just reading it with my mind. I connect to these cards. I've worked with these cards a lot and I've created these cards with Elena Ray, the beautiful artist. So the instructions are, are this. You can regularly consult these 52 cards as oracles and guides throughout your life. 
to be a more empowered empath, have fun, go deep, and embrace your gifts. So these cards are helpful for empathic, caring people who tend to get burnout from overgiving or sensory overload or taking on the stress of the world. How to use these cards. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and take a few deep breaths to relax. Intuitively pick a card for guidance. Inwardly ask a question such as, how can I protect my energy? Then after shuffling the deck, select a card. Reflect on the card's message. Let it really sink in. You want to intuit the card's meaning rather than simply analyzing it. Then put the card's message into action in your life. So the secret is ask only one question because I know people have tons of questions, which if you have a card deck, you have the rest of your time here on earth to use it. So don't feel rushed and just ask one question at a time so you get the clearest answer. So you ask the inner question, formulate it, whatever it is, it's perfect. Your question is perfect. And then shuffle the cards, spread them out, let your hand reach out to one, pick it, read it, aha, there it is. And then put it into action, that's it. Those are the instructions. Wonderful, thank you. So maybe Jacob, we can get you to bring up the first example card, which is the honor your inner child card. And Judith can tell us a bit about that. This is such a pretty card. I'd like everyone to tune in to this card, the, the colors, the innocence, the part of us that needs to be awakened, especially as empaths, because so many inner children who, you know, empaths who have their inner children, you know, like mine, they were shamed for their abilities. Oh, honey, you need to get a thicker skin. You need to be stronger. You need to toughen up to live in our world. These are the kind of messages that empaths were given as children. And so you have to realize none of them are true um, and begin to honor and claim that inner empath, empath child who wants to come out, who wants to play, who wants to tune in, who wants to feel energy. You want to give that child permission to come out. And everybody who's here on this call, you have an inner child and I love your inner child. I just wanna say that, and I'm so sorry you were hurt. And as I know so many empaths were hurt as children or not seen, not heard. They felt like they didn't belong. And so part of your awakening journey as an empath and sensitive person is to honor your inner child's needs always with in your life to have him or her with you. So the, the um, message below the image, and I haven't even gone to the message yet. I'm just tuning into the image, which is so beautiful to me. I love the turquoise between his eyebrows hmm. and the row and the, and the daisy that he's smelling. But the message is focus on your inner child's needs. Is your inner child afraid or in need of more playtime? Cherish this precious being within you. What if you could really do that? You know, really cherish this part of you and begin to reprogram all of the negative messages you were given about being sensitive. You know, that's what this card could help you do. And as we're sitting here together, I hope you're feeling your inner child. And if you're noticing any, any resistance, that's fine too. Um, but just entertain the willingness of loving this precious being within you because the child is there, it's in each of us. Unfortunately, as adults, many adults become very grown up and very intellectual and they lose touch with this. So. It's important to reclaim this to be an empowered empath. So if you get this card, oh, it's, it's a wonderful card. So you can, you can work with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
The next card we have is the honor your sensitivities card. Ah, the rose. <laughs> so if everyone could feel into this card. Now, my process of, of creating this deck was that I matched the messages I want to convey with the image that Elena Ray had. And so this is a, a mix of, of reality plus photographic overlay. So it creates an energy. She's very in touch with energy. And so this is an expansion of your sensitivities. Your sensitivities are a gift. Be proud of who you are. Put your hand over your heart and inwardly say, I embrace my loving heart. And there might be pain there when people do this. I embrace my loving heart. There might be pain there. But there's a warm sun in, in Taoism. Taoism is my primary path the last 30 years. It's um, primary tenet of Taoism is to come from your heart. And the heart has the highest value in life, the heart. Very high value to strive for in our meditations, in our lives. And so putting your hand on your heart is a soothing technique. And it will help you to get in touch with your sensitivities as adults. I assume there aren't any children, but if there are children, you're welcome to, to honor your sensitivities. Um, but as adults, sometimes that means reclaiming it. So each person, if you get this card, you know, really think back on your early life. Sometimes people can't remember their childhood. No, because it was so difficult. Um, it's all right, too. You don't have to force yourself to remember it, but what you want to do is honor your sensitivities in your life today, in your relationships, at work, in your private time. Make sure you're out in nature a lot. Make sure you have enough alone time. You can really work with yourself on how can I honor my sensitivities today? So this card is an invitation you know, to honor your sensitivities and work with any shame you might have, you know, especially, you know, little boys who are empaths are called cry babies and, you know, put down and, and many sensitive children are bullied. Um, it's, it's just horrible. Uh, and so for you to, you know, begin to honor your sensitivities, whatever age, if you're 10, if you're 99, any time is a good time to start. There is no timeline on this. The timeline is only when you're ready. And if you're not ready, don't do it. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you have to want to do. <laughs> so it's not something you have to force yourself to do. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Don't do it. But if you are interested in expanding your sensitivities and being your empowered and past self, these, this will help you. These cards will help you. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, Judith, would you like to go over um, some of the other example cards or would you like to uh, go into a reading with somebody at this point? I'd like to take a few questions before we actually go to the reading. I'd like to just take a few questions about cards, whatever they may be, about these cards, how to use them, um, anything you have to say about cards as a medium to develop your intuition and to find inner guidance. Wonderful, okay. I don't see any questions right off the top. I see a lot of people wanting a reading, but there is a comment <laughs> from Dr. Jackie Taylor. She says, brilliant to be here, Judith. My deck hasn't arrived yet. I'm in the UK and Amazon are not shipping here yet. Right. I have a reading today, Dr. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi in the UK. Glad to have you here. Um, I think the date is in December that they come out in the UK. I'm not sure, but uh, does Jackie want a reading? She might. She might. I, I'm. She didn't. She wasn't one of the ones to volunteer. Oh, she asks. She's asking you. Is this a daily activity? Doing the card reading. Uh, yes, it can be. It can be anything you want it to be. I pull the cards frequently because I keep them on my table in my living room and. When I'm attracted to them, I go there. Because a lot of how I operate is if I'm attracted to something, I'll move there. I mean, just simple movements in the house, where I go, what I do, what I'm attracted to. I just kind of move, you know, usually. I don't think, I then move, I just move. So it's <laughs> just 
a, a point to, to mention for all of you in terms of how to move around in your house, but I'm drawn to the cards. And when I'm drawn to the cards, I work with them. I stop what I'm doing. I sit, I center myself, shuffle, inwardly ask a question and pick and go, oh, okay. <laughs> or if I have a, a problem or if I'm stuck or my head's going crazy and I can't shut it off, I'll go there because I want to get beyond that because it's too painful. So yes, I, I would say in the beginning, you can, when you're getting to know the cards, you can do it every day, especially because you have to get to know it. It's like a living organism. As I said, you know, you, you have to, the more you connect to these cards, my energy is connecting. The more I work with them, the more I hold them over my heart, the more my hands touch them, the more I'm connected to them. So it's better able to respond to my questions. And the whole nature of cards as a living energy is important to get. You don't just slap them around, you know, you really honor them. There, there's something to, to take very seriously. Um, you don't want to do this as fun and games, you know, that, that's very dangerous to do that. You know, you, you want to do it with reverence and you want to do it with the intention of finding your intuitive guidance. So every day would be good in the beginning, especially the first 30 days. So you can get to know each other and see how you, you are together. So you can harmonize and the card can best respond to you. And just as a tip for people, you don't want to you don't like the answer you get. You don't want to keep picking cards because I know people do that. <laughs> right, right. That's it. The, the deck will turn against you. It'll start giving you answers you don't want even more. <laughs> I, I, it's true. I mean, you could test it out, but it's really true. It has a mind of its own and it, and it it's really needs to feel respected and then it will align for your greater purpose. But if you just pick... You know, and I've seen this, I've been places with a deck, like I was at a friend's gathering and these two people who didn't really respect the deck that much, they're saying, oh, let me pick a card. Let me pick a card. You know, I'm like, mm, I don't know about this, but I didn't know how to say no at, the, at that time. So they're, they keep getting the same card. And I said, why do we keep getting the same card? And they both kept getting the same card. <laughs> and so I think the deck was sort of, responding to their energy a bit. But I, I really think it's a living organism. So you want to develop a connection, a nice connection, like you would any any human, really. Okay, go on. Any other any other questions there? Yeah, there there's one from um Celia who asks, do you have to attune the cards to you? Like tapping them three times, etc. And do you need to put them under your pillow to attune? If you want to, you do it. You, you listen to what you want to do. I, I think Celia is incredible. She's incredibly intuitive. You do all the things you want to do, you know, but if you notice the cards don't like it, then stop doing it. And you know what I mean, Celia, you'll be able to, to feel that if the cards don't like being tapped, like my cards don't particularly like it. So I wouldn't do it, but they do like me moving them around with my fingers. I could feel them. I could feel them, but tapping, not so much, but you'll have to see what your cards do. You, it's like a living being, you know, again, this isn't just a toy to play with. It's over the ages, reading cards has been a sacred activity. It's not just fun and games. It's like, you're really connecting to something, you know, really. I, I and you want to honor that something because like any kinds of Oracle cards or Ouija boards, which I never suggest that people use, you don't want to attract weird energy. You want to keep it really clear. You want to come from your heart, have your intention be your own healing, healing the world, helping others. You don't want to use it for the stock market, let's say, or you don't want to use it to get back at people. All right. So it's something to stay very pure with. But Celia, you'll know what to do. You might need to experiment a little with what your deck likes, but be sure to shuffle it a lot. You know, don't just use it as it was the day before. Keep shuffling it. That's important. Thank you. There's a, there was a good question from um, Tamara 
who says, I received my deck and have been using them daily, pulling one each day. I'm not sure if I'm choosing the card intuitively or overthinking my choice. How will I know if I'm choosing intuitively? Um, that's such an important question for you on so many different levels. <laughs> How do I address this? To intuitively choose a card, put your hand on your heart, feel the warmth in your heart and come from that place. All right. The mind, you want to shift out of the mind. The mind is a, a single channel in the human being. The mind is the linear mind. All right. And the thing about being an empath and what we're so good at is learning how to sense the energy of things and not just think them. But it's a conscious effort to shift out of the mind. Like you'll be a pro, what, this is, what is the name of this person? Tamara? Tamara. Tamara. You might approach the deck with your mind because you have a busy life and you have a lot of things to think about and that's all fine. But when you approach the deck, you want to take a few breaths and set all that the worldly matters aside. You want to kind of expand into a larger self so that, you know, you could just ask for the willingness to set all your worldly, the ever growing list of worldly concerns that you'll never get done, by the way. Um, it just keeps adding. That's the nature of it. Uh, but when you're with the cards, you don't want to be in that place of sort of thinking about when you're going to pick up the kids. You don't want to do that. You want to be with the cards completely. And so it's about presence. It's about, you know, consciously setting aside your to-do list and coming from your heart. And then tomorrow, this is really important. And it might be painful for you. I don't know why. But when you let the hand reach out without directing it, it's going to awaken something in you. But I would suggest that you do it just very slowly. Let the hand reach out on its own and then see what card it goes to. And then you'll be very happy. But just for some reason, the reaching out, I don't know if you can relate to what I'm saying, but I don't know what it is, but it might create some discomfort in you to allow this force to come through you which is your inner self it's safe it's loving it's beautiful it's energy it's not going to hurt you but it is not your mind all right so that's kind of a long answer for your question but you're an interesting person you know there's a lot of nuances to how you respond so i just wanted to address a couple of them here's a question from penelope do the collective energies have an impact on the cards and the guidance I get? Sometimes when it all feels chaotic and frazzled, it can be difficult to focus. Although I do love the cosmic, cosmic wink card, she says. <laughs> and there are a lot of cosmic winks around when you can set aside the suffering of the world. You know, there's enormous suffering in the world and empaths are often, you know, so at the mercy of it because they don't, I haven't learned the skills to shift. And I, I just want to say that I've written a book, The Empath Survival Guide. I, I think Banyan has it. And it, it gives you yes, many, sir. many self-care techniques to shift out of the mind into the heart and how to not absorb the suffering of the world. That's a particular skill set that empaths need to learn. And so the collective energy can affect you and that could affect the cards. The cards are immune. The cards are, are separate in a separate kind of a world of, that's larger than anything we could conceptualize. Of. They, they are here in physical form, but their essence is archetypal. So it's much larger than our specific problems in the human race or our personal problems. So you don't have to worry that cards are going to get thrown off by the what's going on in the world. But you need to center yourself. That's the that's the the path for you. How do you center yourself when there's so much going on? How do you center yourself when there's so much suffering out there? How do you center yourself with your own dilemmas in every day? All the the world of Mara, the world of all these concerns. You know, how do you center yourself? That's the big question, and it's important. Your heart is hurting. Um, 
I think you're a little too inter too interested in all of it. You know, you have to have a little witness state. This is the earth realm. This is the realm of suffering. It's the realm of light. Your job is to focus more on the light, on your healing, on your growth, on your intuition. All right. Try not to be distracted by all the pain. I mean, especially now there is, at least we're aware of more of the pain. I think the pain has been going on since the beginning of this planet, but we're very aware of it now. And we're suffering with the post-pandemic world and the divisions. I mean, we're seeing our dark side right up there, aren't we? You know, it's right there in our faces. So you can either choose to learn from it or not, but don't ever underestimate the power of the light, no matter what it looks like on the outside, okay? And you need to center yourself, your hurting heart. <sighs> Holding space is something very good to learn. And you can hold space when you do the cards without needing to fix anything, you know, without needing to suffer for the stranger, all right? It's, a, it's an old habit and it may date back to your parents you know how you dealt with your parents but it's when you're with the cards you want to put your hand on your heart and soothe it so it's not hurting quite so much when you pick the cards so you're distracted you want to be clear when you pick the cards and not be over involved with who's hurting and how can i fix it and how i feel incapable and what am i going to do you now all of that that's not the proper place from which to pull the cards is the simple, quiet place. You can set aside the other, you can go back to it, but you know, maybe you can hold a stone. You know, that's often helpful. I love my stones to put in my hand, you know, to help ground you so you can be more empty minded when you do the cards. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. I just want to say if um, anybody wants to reach me, my website is drjudithorloff.com. I have an online course, the Empath Survival Guide online course with Sounds True, which is on my homepage. Um, so there are all kinds of ways to learn. If you want to, you know, learn this material, the cards are one channel for it. And there are other ways to learn how to become an empowered connected empath. I mean, I think we, I believe passionately that we need empathy more than anything else in the world now. And that um, however we can develop that and learn how to protect ourselves and learn boundary settings so we're not just blown apart by the winds of the world now, which are pretty extreme, you know, just stay the light, you know, just stay focused, the light, the light, the light. Even if there's darkness all around, you keep your focus. You know what you believe in, okay? Yeah, so anyways, thank you for hosting me. I loved, loved this workshop. Thank everyone for their beautiful questions and beautiful presence from all over. Um, I really love being with you and I hope you've gotten a sense of these empath empowerment cards. <laughs>